Hey guys, Cowboy Brett coming to you from the Alfalfa Bell studio with another tall tale. Today we're going to talk about the worst job you've ever had. What is the worst job you have ever had? For me, the worst one, and it's not really that bad of a job, it was just a tough job, very physical. Um, I worked at a feed mill over the summer between uh, two years of college, and uh, the job was um, stacking feed, basically. And so at this feed mill, I don't know if you've ever been in one before, but... When you're sacking grain like corn and oats and rolled oats and things like that, those are coming straight out of a bin, straight into a 50-pound sack. And so what will happen is a bagger, a guy called a bagger, will take that bag, that sack, that empty sack, stick it onto a chute, pull the lever, and it will drop grain out of the silo into that bag. It's got it's on a scale. And so as it's filling up, you can see it getting close to hitting 50. It would it would measure out at 50. He'd shut the chute off and then drop it off of there, stick it in a sewing machine, it'd sew it up, and then hit a conveyor belt. And would go up about seven or eight feet tall, slide off a chute off the backside of it, and land on a on a table that was basically about waist high, so that we could flip it over, pat it out flat, and then stack it on those little um, those little plastic uh, mini pallets that you see at the feed store. And we stack them ten high, and then a guy would take that stack and go put it over with the rest of them, and come back and get the next one. Well, on that grain line, they move pretty quick because there's the, the grain falls out of that out of that silo real fast. So they've got a guy running the bagger, they've got a guy running the uh, the table and the chute and and stacking them up, and then they've got a guy running the stacked feed over to where the warehouse was, and which wasn't very far away, but it was right there. So on my line, I worked on the molasses line. So it was me and another guy, and he was the bagger. I was just the grunt doing the uh, the the stacking of the feed. And on the molasses line, we had three bins that would drop everything from Milo to corn to other pellets, this, that, and the other. And then it would drop molasses in the grain as well. And so because we were mixing molasses in there, um, we never took a break. The guys that were on the grain line, they would work faster for shorter periods of time because that grain was falling out so fast. So they would take a break from time to time. Because ours was much slower and that molasses was dropping on there, we couldn't ever stop the conveyors. Once we, once we turned it on, it stayed on until we hit lunch. And then when we got back from lunch and turned it on, it stayed on until we got finished that day. So no breaks. Well, <clears throat> the, the, the bags of feed are coming over the conveyor belt and they'd hit my table. And I'd pat it, flip them over, pat them out flat, stack them 10 high. And then it was my responsibility to wheel them over into the warehouse. Well, when I wheeled them over there and got them stacked up and everything like that, if by chance you got too close, because I was new, didn't know what I was doing, if you got too close and you took the, the metal fork of your of your um, uh, dolly, or if you took the edge of that plastic piece and you hung the one right next to it, you just knocked a hole in that bottom bag of the stack next to you. So now you had to unstack that one, get the one that's, that's torn off off, bring it over there to get it basically recycled, get another one and, and put it in place of that one, stack those 10 back up, put them back in place, and then put the one you just took over there back in place. All the while, the conveyor is still running and dropping new bags of feed on the table for you to be able to stack. So it didn't take long to figure out how to run the dolly and not break sacks, <laughs> right? Do that two or three times and you figure it out pretty quick. So the thing about it was um, when we got this thing going, I'd have to flip those things over, pat them down, stack them up, take them across there, right? By the time my first day was over with, my hands and my forearms were so sore and so tender and so give out that I couldn't hardly use my hands. I get home that night and still had to do chores, got my chores taken care of, went to bed exhausted, didn't have any trouble. Mom didn't have to rock me to sleep that night. I was out cold. Get up the next morning <laughs> and I could barely get my jeans on. I could get, barely get them buttoned. Mom made me breakfast, sends me on my way. I get out to the truck, and I'm driving a 73 model Ford three-quarter ton. And those 73 model trucks, uh, that body style on the Fords, they were a lift-type handle instead of a button handle or a pull handle like we have today. So you had to stick your fingers underneath there and then flip it up. <laughs> well, my hands were so weak and so tired that when I stuck my fingers in there and lifted them up, they just kept flipping open. It could, I couldn't grip anything. And so I had to go back in the house get mom, have her come out, open the door for me to my own truck so that I could get in so that she could, so that I could go on and go on to work. 
Somehow I got the key in and got it turned and got the truck started and everything like that. I couldn't even grip the steering wheel and drop it into gear. I had to kind of just kind of stick it on the heel of my hand, pull the gear and shift the steering the gear shift out, and then drop it through the gears to get it into gear. So I'm driving to work, the five miles to work, with my hands on the steering wheel like this, thinking, how am I going to grab a sack of feed today? I can't, I can't move my hands. They're not going to be any good today. How am I going to be able to grab anything? So I get up there and I, I do finally end up getting enough movement and enough circulation because I'm, I'm working on the whole drive to work thinking I got to get this worked out. I get there, get things worked out and go to sack and feed. So I average moving about 3,500 sacks of feed a day. Now I didn't do near as much as the green guys did because again, they moved faster and, uh, but there was also three of them. There's only the two of us and I'm the only guy stacking and moving. So we're averaging about 3,500 sacks of feed a day. Well, um, our biggest day, we had um, two big feed stores that were from quite a ways away call, and they loaded down both of our, all three of our big trucks. And so they told us, you know, hey, tomorrow when we come in, we got to be here at 6 o'clock, not 7.30, and we're going to be here late. Okay, great. So we started that morning at 6 a.m., work through lunch and then after lunch we continue stacking feed until um 11 30 that night i moved almost eleven thousand sacks of feed that day and again was exhausted i was tired and uh my hands didn't work very well but i'm telling you what i was in the best shape of my life my forearms i look like popeye my forearms were bigger than my biceps and uh, my grip was unbelievable you did not want to shake my hand at that time in my life because i would crush you like a little man and uh anyway <clears throat> i was humbled and flattered when uh, a few weeks later my dad saw the guys at the feed store and everything and he asked so how's my boy working out for you is he doing doing you a good job oh yeah he's he's here he's working hard he's he's getting things taken care of we're not getting any guff out of him he shows up on time he stays late when he needs to he's not afraid to do anything he's doing a good job what i didn't realize until they had had that conversation with dad is how frequently they had guys quit on them and I learned early on at that age that <clears throat> if you have some work ethic, you can make it a long ways in life, right? That's something we're seeing. Obviously, it took place back then. I'm sure it has since the dawn of time. But when you don't have any work ethic, it's it's tough to make, to get things going. And as an employer, it's tough to find people who have work ethic. And it's it's never been more true than it is in today's society. And as an employer myself, what I've found is that, you know, uh, good workers are hard to find, but they're even harder to keep, right? And so, uh, anyway, I, I was in the best shape of my life that year. We even had, um, every guy had a big stand-up fan of their own because it was so hot in there. Obviously, there's no air conditioning, so we each had our own individual fans. Well, the fun thing for us was when you went to lunch, when you came back from lunch, you kind of leave a little bit of ice, a little bit of water in your in your, in your cup, and as you walk through the, the feed mill, there's only two of us crews working, and so the other guys on the grain line, they'd be sure and pull this on me and, and my and my sacker as we would uh, be sitting there working, you know, doing our own thing, minding our own business. They walk over there and take that little bit of water, a little bit of ice and toss it into those fans, which would vaporize that ice and that water. And when you're sweating your tail off and it's 115 degrees in the barn that you're working in and all of a sudden ice water hits you in the form of a mist, you lose your breath. <laughs> <laughs> you can't think. All you can do is just try to breathe, and it doesn't work very well. But uh, anyway, that was the worst job I've ever had. Um, again, not the worst job, the toughest job I've ever had. So I'm curious to see what you guys' toughest job is. I always enjoy asking people what their toughest job was. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed that story. If you did, be sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, share the channel for us. We sure do appreciate it. In the meantime, this is Cowboy Brett coming to you from the Alfalfa Bale Studio. Y'all have a good day.